feature selection of the Apple II was not driven by saying, what do people want to use for what purpose? What do they need? How many characters on the screen was decided by one factor only? How many characters fit on a home color TV? It was the Apple II was the first of the low-cost computers to, uh, to have any sort of interface available, even if you counted what weren't standard features on the other ones. It was the first one to say the, the, the starting input-output device is a home color TV. It was the only one that would work in that mode because it had, that's what shows 40 characters across in the character selection. Um, the end goal was to be very few chips and to be inexpensive. <coughs> Even things like having the screen, the screen has a whole bunch of addresses. And they go in a jagged pattern as you go up and down the lines in an Apple II. The reason for that selection, it saved me two chips with a clever little implementation. If you can take it down to the club and show a 30 chip circuit instead of 32, that's a little bit of a plus. The computer was not being designed to be a product and it was not being designed to be sold nearly as much as it was being designed to impress and do some very unusual things that had not been seen before. Um, so many optimizations converge on the Apple II um, from the, just the way that the, way the bus worked out the, um, um, to the number of characters on the screen and all this. It had a lot of firsts. When we finally shipped the Apple II, looking back, it seems like, well, it was just, you know, standard technology of the day, which it was. But it's very unusual to find that a few major things were done for the first time ever. Standard parts of a low-cost computer, first time ever, and yet they've been in virtually every, mic every microcomputer since that's been successful. It was the first one to have BASIC included in ROM, the very first one. BASIC is built in. The first one ever to have a plastic case. The first one ever to be completely assembled. All you got to do is plug it in the wall. The first one ever to have 48K of RAM built in on the motherboard where you don't even go to any slots, that was unheard of. All the other computers, you had to start plugging in like 1K and 2K boards into every slot to add it up. Uh, we had gone for the state-of-the-art dynamic RAMs. It was the first one to have color. It was the first one to have paddles. The first one to have sound. The first one to have graphics. And the first one to have high res ever. Ever. This had not been done in a low-cost computer ever. Peripherals had been designed indicating these things in some of these areas, but they were expensive and not built into standard features. One of the hearts of the Apple II was we recognized that a lot of things that made good sense that were cheap, that you could put in for one chip, put this feature in for one chip, put four panels in for one chip, everything that could be put in for almost no cost that made sense intuitively was right to build in as much as you can. The, the, the advantage of the Apple II was it didn't leave a lot of things to slots that we could build in cheaply. It left enough slots for expansion that was going to come beyond what we could think of. We, in other words, whenever you can recognize standards that are going to exist and prevail, build them in. And that, that works up to even this day with products like our Apple IIc and Macintosh.